This week on Barbell Shrug, we talked to Matt Baird, Director of Operations at CrossFit North Atlanta and Competitive CrossFitter. We're going to talk about training history, his journey since 2009, and we're going to talk about individual programming versus blog programming. Get some! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> All right, welcome to Barbell Shrug, episode 36. Uh, make sure to check us out on Facebook. Hit the like button. Mm. Only if you like us, though. Um, well, I don't care. <laughs> no, if you don't like don't us, just do like it us. anyways. Just like us. Yeah, just like us. I don't care. Um, we'll face consequences. Yeah. Announcing the... I'm now announcing we're going to have a live event with Rich Froning on December 4th. We're going to iron out those details. Uh, you'll be able to ask questions, and he'll be able to answer them live. But we're uh, gonna, you're going to lift in the barn, run in the field, and then shoot stuff with your shirt off. Is that, is that what we do? Doug's going to announce his, his entering into the CrossFit world, and he's going to take on Rich. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> totally. That's That's for the great title, idea. For the title. <laughs> yep. He's going to stare um, him down and be like, you. I'm actually going to do, I'm gonna do <laughs> my best to not train with Rich, because I do not like being demoralized. So I've trained with that guy like twice, and both times I was like, I just, I, I want, level I'm going to stop training. I don't want to do this He anymore. just keeps moving the bar, and you are gasping for breath on the ground. Yeah, he, I, I once trained with him when he was sick. He had like flu. And he still smoked you? And yeah, he, he killed me. What, would you, what did you do? What was the wide? I was, what was the wide, like, which stands for workout of the day? They ran, Cleans they and ran, pull-ups they and ran two miles. rowing. And <laughs> <laughs> I would do that. All sorts of stuff. All right, so uh, make sure also uh, go to fitter.tv. Um, that's F I T R dot TV and, uh, sign up for our newsletter so you can be notified of all the cool stuff. Also, we now have quite a few seminars. If you want to download those technique, wad.com mm-hmm. technique, is a good place to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, now, uh, we'll roll, we'll, and now you also have the new features on there. Why don't you share that with the audience? The features, the new daily features. Oh yeah. Totally forgot about that. <laughs> well, that's why you have a team here to help you. That's right. <clears throat> uh, also, make sure to go to the website because you do not want to miss out on the Daily BS. Don't miss that. Which is a very, very short version of Barbell Shrug. You know, BS, get it? Uh, um, that's where uh, some of us from the team, we take your questions that you guys have submitted because we're terrible about answering them on this show. Uh, it's where we take your questions and we answer them in a pretty concise manner. Uh, so far, the videos have ranged. We've been doing it for about a week now. They've ranged mm-hmm. from uh, 90 seconds to, what, four minutes. So we keep it pretty short. Uh, we're also oh, submitting geez. that to iTunes. Perfect when you're sitting on the toilet at work and you're trying to burn a few minutes. You know what I'm saying? Just that is pull true. That, pull out that cell phone, watch a few daily BS episodes, get your learn on. That's right. We're post your butt, go to work. <laughs> we're posting In them every day. <laughs> yeah. Was it uh <laughs> we, we, we submitted that to iTunes, so that's going to be a separate podcast, too. Okay, cool. Did that get accepted yet, or are we still waiting? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Did Zombie Steve Jobs give you approval for you? <laughs> zombie <laughs> Steve Jobs. <laughs> so we'll, um, we're, we're going to have that up, so you'll be able to subscribe to that on your, your uh, iTunes account and stuff, too, so you can just get that loaded up. All right, we're going to go on with the show now. I'm Mike Bledsoe. Got... Doug Larson and Chris Moore, the mm, usual suspects, no. and our building. guest, Matt Baird. Thanks Yay. for having me, guys. Dude, Matt are you, Baird are is... They, are they in for a treat or what? Mike? They are in for a treat because Matt Baird is a character. Oh, God. Um, Don't set me up. Character. Fact, and I want, I want CTP, if you could zoom in on his deltoids. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got like a $200 Lululemon shirt on, but... The way it wraps itself around those deltoids, <laughs> exposing those man creases. Oh, oh my, my God. goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, my God. Matt, Matt is never shy. And then we, we put him in front of a microphone. Everybody advice from you, bro. Uh, only the ones that want to fail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matt is the director of operations at CrossFit North Atlanta. You guys are in the middle of uh, expanding, so you must be doing something right over there. So yeah. you know a little bit about business and running a CrossFit gym. <laughs> 
You're also a uh, CrossFit competitor since 2009, yep. and you've run the gamut of uh, doing really stupid training. And now you've <laughs> now you've arrived, and now all your training is 100 percent intelligent. Uh, I don't know about arrived, but <laughs> definitely definitely have some experience. Um, yeah, man. Talk a little bit about that. So I kind of started CrossFit. And my journey to it kind of very similar to a lot of other people's. I, I was a college athlete, played college baseball, and then basically it was like, I'm done with sports. How do I get really big? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, 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 like I, I want to get swole, you know what I mean? And so it was uh, you know, the usual the usual suspects in the gym type of thing as far as chest and back on Monday and shoulders and legs on Tuesday with an emphasis on shoulders and not on legs. Uh, <laughs> um, and then, you know, like depending on if it was, if it was a, a fall season, I would either split buys and tries or obviously I would go big and superset it. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. know, buys yeah, and yeah. tries and then maybe do like a whole body thing on a Saturday or like do chest again. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just trying to get that big bench. But, um, and you, would your bench is still pretty big. It is, it is, but so it's. This all, guy told me he benched three fifty the other day. Oh. But it also, it's funny because three fifty, because um, yeah, but he actually what, weighs two hundred and twenty pounds. No, it doesn't. No, <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> with abs, with abs <laughs> like that, give me a break, man. <laughs> no, but it's it's funny because, and we'll kind of get to that when I did bench all the time and a bunch of fucking chest isolation stuff. <sighs> I benched like 275 and I think <laughs> I think at the height of my like meatheadedness I weighed like 202 and closed grip 295 and then and got up and screamed your way through the gym. Yeah, and like <laughs> made sure everyone saw it. And you now know. you don't try and you bench 70 pounds more. Or well, it's funny because I kind of got sick of that stuff. I I I was at the University of Alabama and um, roll tide whatever. Yeah, roll tide that's right. <laughs> and um I had a friend down in down in uh, Daytona Beach who kind of like y'all sort of was into a more high intensity what he thought was functional exercise but again it really was just you could just tag it functional bodybuilding at that point mm. and uh, power he, building yeah yeah and he boom <laughs> coined there it is well, that's not that's a thing that's a thing already and, uh, <laughs> and uh, that's what you call bodybuilders who no, are not just bodybuilders but they're also assholes. Well, I, 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 got, I think I still have that covered. Like basically, you go from like the guy who's trying to get huge to now the guy who's trying to get huge while wearing like torn, cut off, you know, sweatshirt shirts and screaming and throwing the weight. Like yeah. the power mm -hmm. is meatheadedness amplified. <laughs> Dude, that is fantastic. Uh, but anyway, basically, you know. At the the end game and that scenario, whereas juxtaposed to CrossFit is all Whoa. about performance. Juxtaposed, it's, it's, it's like uh, our audience needs you to tone it down a little compared, bit. Compared, <laughs> compared to to CrossFit, where it's all performance related, the end game for me was really just there was no end game. It was aesthetic based. It was like everyday evaluation, and I wasn't kind of like, oh my god, I look good or look bad. But it was like the whole purpose or reason behind it was that was driving me to go to the gym and train for two hours was, you know, get bigger abs or be stronger. And there was an element of, um, it was of day by day. It wasn't like you, yeah, you failed to like look ahead and go, okay, I'd like to get there. Yeah. What's a reasonable measured approach for getting there. Yeah. How it was more, plan the way I approach this to make progress. Yeah. It wasn't calculated at all and it wasn't intelligent. It was more like, um, <laughs> read up on a program, test it, you know what I mean? And then the end result was, do I look better? And yeah, I'd like to be, instead of benching 275, I'd like to really get to 280. You know what I mean? But how do you get there? That was, I, that I never really, doing the same I, never, I, never really, I never really implemented that. And I'm assuming that's kind of most people's, especially in the competitive arenas, sort of journey to functional fitness and then to CrossFit. And then somewhere in 2008, my friend in Daytona Beach had opened up a CrossFit gym and I had tried, you know, the 300 workout. And then I had done a series of other CrossFit workouts with him. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, that'll be cool. Like, I'll do my stuff Monday through Saturday, Monday through Friday. <laughs> and then on Saturdays, I'll do CrossFit. And then it, that sort of turned into I'm really bored doing what I'm doing. I'm getting nowhere. This is monotonous. It's not fun anymore. I've been doing this for like four years, you know, um, and then it was like looking for something else. And then, so basically 
I actually didn't start with main site. I've always been this like arrogant snob about never doing main site, you know, because I was like, you've oh, never done main site. I never based my programming around like doing main site. The only time I actually did main site for a specific amount of time was when I first got to North Atlanta and I was like doing my own thing in the corner, ruining classes. And Travis was like, yo dude, like you're over here doing fucking snatch and, and bench press and everyone else is doing Eva and they're all pissed off because you're not doing the same thing. So stop it. And so I did main site for like three so weeks. These guys shitting on your Liberty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, I wasn't, me. I wasn't paying a gym bill either. So, oh. so it was kind of like, what do you do? But, um, yeah, I got into CrossFit in 2008. And what I did is I actually went to like Jim Jones and then to main site and a bunch of other, um, boxes that had like respectable reputations like Chris Spieler's box was one of them at that time. Uh, CrossFit Jacks was one of them at that time. Um, I don't think y'all were around yet, but I don't know if the respect was there. We were not. around, but I'm not sure we even had a website up. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty uh, sure we were, we're was uh, we're founded like, in 2008. Pretty right? sure you didn't have computers. We were, we were founded in the fall of 2007, but... Our website, I don't think we had a website up for a whole year. Till 2010. No, yeah. I, I made that first website. And, and then we got blacklisted on Google. Like, you, yeah, <laughs> it was, it was, uh, I made our first blog in like April of 2009. Yeah, that was the like first that. blog yeah. we Before ever that, had. we had basically that was like, just that was a, a blogger It was blog. an iWeb website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and some of the code was jacked up. So, so, Google, really so Google goes, and Google <laughs> goes, that's not right. And then, like, we were getting like banned. I had, to, like, I had to pay, like, $1,000 so we could get back on Google searches. Which stretched the budget a little bit at that point. <laughs> at that time, yeah. <laughs> you were like, Doug's not getting paid this month. <laughs> but it's not how that, much. <laughs> that's when we moved into the gym. And but yeah. the most, yeah. important, yeah. the most yeah. important thing, right, Michael, is that no matter what, you just get, you get your foot in the door, you get something going. You don't wait till you get the perfect fucking website ready. You get yeah. something up there. Oh, yeah. And you just start the long march towards better from, from that well, point. That, that's, Dude, that's actually probably pretty good advice for people mm-hmm. that are just looking to start CrossFit. When people come into my gym, and I'm sure you guys get it too, and they're doing a gym tour, they're like, you know what? I feel like I should probably get in shape before I do this. And it's like, no, 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 no. Don't think that. <laughs> just just come in. Just don't wait till everything's perfect. Just get, <laughs> just get in here. I need to get in and shape. We'll, and we'll so- make it. And I can we'll get make in shape. It, and we'll make it perfect. It reminds me of people mm-hmm. who go, I got to get in tan so that when I go to the beach, I don't burn. I got to get tan first, and then I'll go get tan. Well, that's that's common knowledge, dude. Everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <laughs> look at, yeah, that's, that's, I can tell a look at that hairline. You know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's more genetic. I got high power alleys. It's kind of... Yeah, I'm just... I'm, <laughs> I'm just... High power alleys? Power alleys, like in a baseball field, you know, they have the power alleys in the right center and left center. Okay. <laughs> These are called power alleys. So. Yeah, that, that sounds way better than you have, <laughs> going bald. That's right. <laughs> I got to say, I got power alleys. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna call it from now on. That's what I like. well, but the hairline's myself. strong. It's like a, it's like a, like a, 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 a modern Clark Kent kind of look. Well, that's what I'm going for. I've got nothing. I've got the, the enemy has advanced way beyond the that <laughs> perimeter. Yeah, but your coolness sort of like evades your baldness, so it's sort of like. Oh yeah, oh, that and that. I've always been told my head's too big, <coughs> too big to be fully haired. <laughs> <laughs> It just looks too big. Exactly. Like, like I shave it down, it almost has the illusion of being close to normal. He's got yeah. a helmet on if he grows hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, as far as just training, you know, I basically started perusing websites, and I've always been kind of like geeky with exercise science stuff and and trying to figure out kinetics even on an amateur level. So I was doing a a bit of that even when I body built. So it was, I would consider whether it's ego or whether it's truth, like my bodybuilding program to be a bit more detailed and thoughtful than, <laughs> than the, than just a, a, a bias tries, but that's essentially what it was. Even if you want to call it high intensity or not functional or not superset this or not, it, 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 you know, it was still bodybuilding. So I got tired of that, got into CrossFit in 2008, was doing basically CrossFit workouts in the university of Alabama rec center and basically getting kicked out every day. <laughs> like they're like, you can't bring those sixty pound dumbbells up to that track. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then you know, like doing thrusters and throwing them on the track because my forearms would blow up. And, <laughs> and like you know, I'd be like twenty. Oh shit! Like I'm definitely not gonna get all those. You know. And um, and then it basically turned into, I went back for spring break. This was in December or Feb, December or January. I started doing CrossFit, and then I went back for spring break to Atlanta. 
And instead of going on vacation, I went down to Daytona Beach to train, traincation. That's traincation. That's train-cation. a meathead thing. That's a meathead tradition. Yeah. Sounds, sounds like something Matt Baird would do. Traincation. And so I, so I basically <laughs> went down there, and they had, um, they had already had an established box with quite a few members. And I basically just, you know... I don't want to say drink the Kool-Aid because that sounds really stupid. But you did. But but yeah, but I was like, whoa, this is fucking awesome. It's like, you know, there was this kid down there who played college football and we kind of hit it off and we started, you know, competing every day. And that was an element of like bringing me back to my old sports days that I thought were gone, which is, you know, what a lot of people like about CrossFit, especially guys. Did you, you know go for I mean? drinks after no, the train? No. no okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was just the first day. Yeah, it was just it was strictly... On top of the clothes type of deal. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I got basically got back and like I had two more days. till I went to, till I went back to school and I went to North Atlanta and met Travis and worked out there for two days. And he was like, Hey, you're kind of good. Like you should think about competing. And they had the dirty South regionals, which is when this is back when you didn't have to come qualify. You could just go. Yeah. So it was funny because, uh, I actually was going to go. But something happened. I think someone died. I don't, it's and it's oh. bad that I don't remember. This. They must have not been too important. <laughs> oh, <my> God. <laughs> oh God! But uh, but but I basically like had to go to a funeral. And, I remember and, somebody I loved and cared about deeply died. Like, it was like my were. aunt or something. But it was like three, three four years ago. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. A lot's been done since then. So yeah. basically, <laughs> basically, basically, uh, I missed that that regional and that was when you know when uh, when brandon phillips got to the games and that was the 2009 games and everything was they took like the top seven you know what right I mean? yeah and then the next year <clears throat> crossfit essentially really started to blow up on a business level and on uh and on a united states sort of a national scale and and honestly a, a global scale it seemed like too and so they implemented those statewide sectionals right so oh yeah so the next year i basically trained that whole year knowing like i want to compete you know what I mean? Like, this is something like I want to do. Like, I don't like, I want to be really good at it. Like, I don't know how good I am. Like I beat people in my gym, but how good are they? Um, and, and you know, when I travel to other places, I would, I would, you know, get good workouts in or someone would be like, Hey, that guy's really good. And we would trade workouts if we did it a couple of times or something like that. So I was like, maybe I am good at this or maybe I'm not. Or so basically fast forward to February of 2009 or I guess 2000. 10, right? Was that 9 or 10? When, what was that sectional? 2009. Oh, the sectional was in 20. 10. 10. Yeah. Because 2009, you went straight to regionals. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I basically trained that whole previous year leading up to that sectional in 2010. And then that February, it was like state sectional. I'm 30, it was at Stone Mountain. Which I was it there. It was like 40 to fucking degrees. I was there watching. Worse. <laughs> it was a good event because my boss helped throw the event, so I can't throw him under the bus and tell him it was a shitty event. It's so terrible. But it was like 40 degrees, and basically the first workout was run a th- row a thousand meters and run up fucking Stone Mountain, which is like demoralizing because you've trained. And by the way, I didn't... Back then, my training was like, um, you know, lift, like... I'd clean Monday and then do a Metcon and like, what was the Metcon? Who fucking knows? And then Tuesday it was like, Oh, we should probably deadlift, you know? And it like, was how, sort of ran- and like too how, random. Hey, yeah, it was still random. But the thing, and the thing I kind of was talking about this before I was still so new to CrossFit that in my opinion, um, the, the merits of a <clears throat> smarter program are really found once you start to have an actual base. So you can take someone who gets into CrossFit, Right. And they have a good athletic background and they come in and they're young and they're injury free, maybe. And you throw them in freaking Bob's CrossFit gym. And Bob is basically just picking wads out of a hopper. Today, we're going to do fucking box jumps and kettlebell swings and burpees. And there's no rhyme Bob's or reason intense. to it. There's no, there's no fucking, there's no, you know, there's no periodization or there's no strength cycle development no. this or energy system that. And those people will actually see these exponential gains. You know, they will go from, from deadlifting 135 to 225 in two weeks. And then they'll go from 225 to 315 in another three weeks. And then all of a sudden they're functionally fit, you know, and I kind of ran that as its course instead of doing main site, I would just kind of go on people's websites and look at these 
crazy workouts. Oh, look at this one, man. It's got 185 cleans in it and it's 25 minutes and it, you accumulate a thousand reps. You know what I mean? And like that, I would just try to do as many like brutalizing, you know, like basically make you so sore that it hinders your training for two weeks. Uh, like basically something that would make Doug just puke just like, and not in a, not in an exercise way and in like a house stupid. Or way. Um, and you know, it was, it you're be, cutting your teeth at this point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and did I make gains? Yes. But were those gains attributed to, to, um, the programming no, they were just attributed to the fact that I had been bodybuilding for four years and now I'm testing different energy systems. You start, you start even, training much that, harder. That I don't even more, know fucking exists. Yeah. You know, I don't even, I have no idea about really what I'm doing. I'm just kind of, I'm just kind of doing right. right. And then it's funny. I actually, you know, qualify. I got sick like two days before it. Um, I got like awful food poisoning. My girlfriend at the time had like gone to Publix in Tuscaloosa and bought me this like tuna. She's like, you like fish, right? I'll cook it for you. And I was like, that fish smells kind of like fishy. She was like, well, it's fish, you know? And I fucking got super sick and was in the infirmary two days before and hadn't eaten anything. Felt super weak. So I got like 50th on that run going up the hill. You tell her you betrayed me. Yeah. Well, this our, relationship, rela- our, is our relationship ended soon after that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no one makes me miss the wad. And Brash. basically long story short, I forget what I got. I placed decent or whatever. Um, and then was like, all right, it's on, you know, there's a qualified and there's 60 athletes going down to Jacksonville, similar to how it is now. It wasn't as big. Uh, this is actually the year that Richard, Richard Froning came out and, mm-hmm. and and showed his dominance in the Southeast. And CrossFit was just growing. And basically three weeks or four weeks into my training um, for, for regionals, I, I completely tore apart my spinal erector and basically popped a hole in my QL. Um, no, I remember this, yeah. Yeah, and it was, it was basically, dude, I was kind of like everything. I, I had been dropping the ball in school. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't give a fuck about class or education. Like, I'm fucking, I got a double so today, So you're making bro. all these great decisions in your <laughs> yeah, life Yeah, right like, now. perfect. Like, everything was CrossFit-centric and training-centric. You, you, you were broed out. Yeah. Oh, dude. It was, you point. know. And as far as training then. <laughs> you broed yourself into injury and fa- almost, like, fa- falling out of school. Exactly. And training then, and training then, I wasn't failing because I still I still had straight A's. I just wasn't going, which which eventually led into the grades dropping. Okay. Not, not the, fa- not the failing. Cusp, this was the cusp but, but it was But they were starting to get, like, they were starting to get to where I would be like, I hadn't been to class this class in two weeks. Like, <laughs> fuck, we had papers, so I would just leave, you know, and then and then you do the old like, well, you've already shit the bed, so you need to drop the class before drop add in. So you get a W versus a WF, you know? Yeah. So I did a lot. <laughs> no, I guess I he's codes. like, no, I don't. So that's so that so that delayed my Who graduation. Drops classes? That delayed my graduation. <laughs> I, always, from, I always went to class every day, bro. No, you didn't. I, I studied and I did all that stuff. So basically <laughs> and it's funny because training then, um, this is when Olympic lifting started really sort of taking off in the CrossFit community. And it's funny because I guess that's the evolution of the sport. Do you think it's of- weird that no one ever thought weightlifting on its own was cool until really until CrossFit sort of made it really, really cool? Like on a, on a, yeah. on a general front, like on people who well, just want to be fit and strong, sort of really idolizing weightlifting. And for years and years and years and years on its own, no one was impressed with weight well, there's a, there, like it sort Doug, of sparked in the crossfit well world. I, I think personal trainers just refuse to teach olympic lifting because, it's too hard it's well too, it's, too it's too hard to, it's hard to They're, know it's hard, it's hard to know how to coach yeah and then you start throwing for yeah something something sparked with crossfit that made like the average personal trainer want to learn how like to 40 year old soccer moms coach. now like Cleaning fantasize while they're like doing housework or working at the job like Oh, I wonder if I could ever snatch X pounds. When yeah. did that ever happen before? Well, I, I think two tr- personal trainers. <laughs> never yeah. in history of the world. You can say that with confidence, right? That that never really happened. The, I quali- agree. the quality control on personal trainers, even today, is so um, sort of sketchy, man. Non-existent. That, yeah, that like that like teaching Olympic lifting takes a certain knowledge base of 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 exercise in general, and a lot of these guys just don't have that. Not to mention the fact that Olympic lifting is really fucking difficult. And, and like, how are you going to feel if you're a personal trainer? If you're looking like an idiot in front of a client, you're just losing money at that point. Oh, Sally can't do it. Well, we don't even want Sally to attempt it because I can't fucking do it. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's just, I feel bad for Sally, even if she is hypothetical. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But as far as training wise, um, it was funny because why did I, why did I train? Why did I tear my erector? And I was definitely overtrained. Like my body was definitely, my body was definitely like, 
if there's one thing I can say about you, in contrast to what you did yesterday, you you made me proud. I, got, I had a tear in my eye when he worked up to 285 in a snatch. I missed 285. Yeah, and he had a, a he had a he had a he had a, a routine non-eventful miss. You didn't like get crushed by that. You just pulled it in the right position and you stopped that. I, I kind of hit it. Oh, you're gonna try that again? And you said no, no. no. Well, you said no, and. In well, previous I years, two, you would have done that shit. I would have done that you for 20 minutes. <laughs> so you're on the floor with that. Especially because I've hit 285. So, <laughs> like, so I would have been like, oh, something. And then if I didn't hit it that day, my mind would have been all like. That's a huge. My that's mind would have been all like, oh, my God, you've gotten weaker. Like, what the fuck? Like, in just, a week. <laughs> just to draw the point. That's a huge, <laughs> that's a huge, that's a huge point uh, that shows sort of maturity in training is that when you know. It's easy when you're younger. What just more naive just to keep pushing on all fronts all the time. But learning when to hold back and to not do something is one of the hardest lessons in training. Like learning when to not try the thing again. Yeah. Well, I, I've got this. I've got this sort of learning thing, when man. to do it and when not to do it. It takes years of time. And this has taken me. This has honestly taken me until this year training with CJ Martin. Shout out to CJ Martin. Um, to realize is like, dude, all those missed attempts, dude. That's just hindering your recovery. Like you. Oh yeah. Like like every missed attempt is. And I mean, this is sort of a, a, a sort of a hyperbole hyperbole example, but it's kind of like. Like, it's like every missed attempt you can think about is another hour that you're just going to need to recover. And another hour you just need to recover. Another hour, and even though that's not fact. So if you're, if you're just good, weightlifting, it's probably fine. But if you're weightlifting and yeah, man, doing a 5K because, for recovery like you yeah, do. Yeah, your body, you your gotta, body you needs. You got to measure things out. Dude, your body needs, especially with CrossFit and all the amount of work you're doing, even if you have the most intelligent program for you, you probably need more recovery than you think. And even probably, you probably need more recovery than you're probably getting. No, you know what I mean. Like, quick, how many grams of protein do you eat a day? Well over two hundred. Well, how many how many hours of sleep do you get a day? Eight, at least. How many cups of coffee? Zero. Oh God, another one. You, <laughs> <laughs> this guy's not drinking coffee like all week long. Like, no, I've, I've had I've had I two. Drink coffee, I've had, this is my second cup of coffee in two weeks. I don't drink coffee. Don't you coffee feel alive? Don't you feel Drink alive quicker. for the first time in two weeks? I feel stimulated. Uh, are things tingly? Your, your, your are fucking, appendages your tingly? Your nervous system is just like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've actually had exceptional uh, weightlifting the last two weeks. I dropped coffee, and three days later, I hit well, especially a PR on my here. snatch. And then the la- over the last couple of weeks, and part of it is, is I've been traveling a little bit and working with really high-level weightlifting coaches. So I don't know if it's the, the being caffeine-free. It, it probably has nothing to do with being caffeine free. It has everything to do with working with good coaches, but new experiences. Like my my weightlifting's been really really nice lately. Yeah. In the absence of caffeine, you look great, and man. it's and it's okay. No homo, by the way. Yeah. No homo. Your, your lips look pretty good too, man. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because when I was training for uh, the 2010 regional uh, weightlifting, like we were just talking about, got, that's when it was like, oh, you know, like weightlifting is a huge component of CrossFit. You know what I mean? People need to get good at this. So what I did, this was the smartest. This was me like really individualizing my program is um, I found this this blog by uh, Jason Kalipa's coach and it had like all these workouts, like all these Metcons and it oh, was yeah. a strength program and then like these double days of Metcons and they were a lot, of, they were intervalized. So I was actually like, I thought I was like ahead of the game. I'm like, I'm intervalizing things. Like I wasn't just doing, <laughs> I wasn't just doing testers. I was actually the intervalizer. like, I, I like, I realized the difference between training and testing, you know, and like training. And so uh, w- whether the work rest or was legitimate or not, I was just like, I was intervalizing some days and then I was fucking testing CrossFit wads the next day. At this and point, what, you, you're like, you know, just. This. At this point, I'm like inflamed. Beyond You're fancying yourself like a sports scientist. <laughs> yeah, I bet, experiment I, on yourself. Yes, and that's that. I love that because all I feel like all CrossFitters once they reach like a two year mark are all amateur sports scientists. You know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, a, it's an un- rapidly unfolding. <laughs> it's like weird. You're sport. like, Do it's you like have your CSCS. He's like, no, bro, I own CrossFit. Fucking Kennesaw CrossFit. Fucking <laughs> I am my own thing. CrossFit. Dude. You know what I mean? But what I did is I took that those conditioning wads. And they were they were good workouts. Um, and then I slapped like a twelve week performance menu cycle on top of it. So in the AM, I, I remember did, that the, in the AM I did <laughs> Olympic weightlifting, and these were like full on Olympic weightlifting two hour sessions. You know, snatch eighty percent double, snatch eighty five percent single, snatch ninety percent single by three, snatch pulls eighty five, ninety, ninety five, a hundred percent, and then front or back squat, and then snatch deadlift too. 
on days. And then Tuesdays, you know, your, your power versions of the lifts. And then right. Wednesday you're off. And then Thursday, I was, no, they had a Wednesday, but I was like, no, that's too much. You need to take Wednesday off from lifting and then get it back Thursday. <laughs> so, so I'm basically following performance venue four days on I'm training conditioning five days on. And is it any wonder that like, four weeks into my training, my back was like, uh, we're going to tear. <laughs> and, and, and basically I, t- I tore my spinal erector deadlifting. Like, uh, I was doing that McGee wad. Oh you yeah. You know, that work as a 30 minute AMRAP with 275 deads. And I kept on like torquing from right. You're, to doing, left. you're doing the over under. Yeah. And you were like torquing yeah. from right to left and that, and Doug will tell you, know, that'll, that shifts your QL and all that tension torquing back and forth popped my ql and the trauma from that basically was isolated in my like the pressure basically isolated in my erector and just freaking tore it and that was 90 days of of nothing from april 9th until basically 90 days later i did nothing this guy um, this guy like nelson mandela when he had to go to jail for 30 years this is dude, this, is, dude, this was like this was like you know <laughs> dude, this was a pain dude this was painful because the best part this is, is like this is your time in the wilderness the best part yeah oh dude, dude finding yourself this is when batman is in the underground jail four, four, you, don't, you don't know if he's gonna come out because yeah. he's on the bench with a hurt trying back. to fucking climb the wall dude basically bane um, only, and like, your subconscious is telling you you're never gonna train dude, again i'm telling you and, it was, and it's <laughs> bad and it's bad it's bad because because if you remember i wasn't i was neglecting school so at that point when you can't train four hours a day you have to go back to school because you're like fuck what am i gonna do sit here and watch like first take on espn six times so i went back to school and was like well these grades suck you know what i mean so i concentrated on that and did like running and basically started i basically couldn't take it after three or four weeks of not doing anything. So I did like bodybuilding again and it was, you're dipping into the weeds now. You're you're, in a dark phase. This was a dark time. This was a dark time. And, uh, basically rehab myself back. Um, I actually emailed Bill Starr. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the famous strength and conditioning coach and was like, Bill, fucking help me. I'm a CrossFitter. I don't know if you like CrossFit, but I've done something awful. <laughs> and, my fucking back, <laughs> and my fucking back is completely torn. I went and got an MRI. Like, I've got a, I've got a small <laughs> Bill tear. Star is old ass. Like, what the fuck is this? He's like, dude, he's like, who the fuck is this? And how did he get my fucking email? <laughs> and then I emailed him, and like two weeks later, he actually sent me. He was like, once you can, uh, <laughs> once you can like bend over without like injury pain, it's just, or without, without like, you know, injury pain, it's just your hurt pain. He's like, take the exercise that you hurt yourself with and do 75 reps of, it's like super old school shit, dude. Like, I'm like, this is probably not the best way <laughs> to do this, dude. but like he basically was like, grab, he's like, whatever you did. Cause he's like, he did this with squatters, like guys who had like tore their back squatting. He's like, you start with the bear bar and you do three sets of 25 with the bear bar. And then the next week you put on five or you do that for two days. And then you basically incrementalize kilo wise all all the way up. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to, you're trying to flush all the fucking adhesion out and get fresh blood to the, to the sort of injured area. And that fresh blood's obviously going to, Gonna change you know, your life. Gonna basically rehab you to Bill be. Bill Starr is. You don't want. You don't want old blood in there. Yeah. No old yeah. blood. Don't want stagnant. Bill blood. Starr is the reason why you're here today. <laughs> yeah. And so basically, then, you know, I I basically was like, all right, you know, I saw some guys go to the games again, and I saw Rich do really well at the games, and uh, and you know, saw a bunch of buddies. You know, Brandon Phillips had become a close friend of mine at that time, and he got, you know, he was in fifth and got tenth. And, you know, we trained back and forth and obviously being a man, I'm like, you know, I can beat you. You know what I mean? And so I trained that whole summer um, and actually did the exact same thing. It's funny, just without as much Metcon, I basically went back to performance menu. And once I was able to work out, I I, I was like, okay, you hurt yourself because you were overtrained. So what you need to do is you need to, you need to phase your stuff. Like Right now is the time to get strong. And this was in the summertime, right after the game. So I was like, you can afford to not be in peak condition. And my, and obviously I started reading more about exercise science and just trying to parallel it to other sports. Like, okay, dude, do football players play football six times a week and then go play another football game on Saturday? Or do they practice skills? And do they practice tackling? And do they hit the weight Wisdom. room? And do they practice conditioning? And that started to make sense in my mind. And I didn't have a coach at that point. 
Um, and so I was like, I didn't, I knew the concept of periodization. I didn't know how to really parallel it to multiple modality fitness. But what I did is I sort of went by feel and I was like, okay, right now you need to lift and you need to get really good at Olympic lifting. Cause I thought that, um, that was going to sort of be the crutch of the competitive athlete. Like, and I, I still think that range true. My example is like how many top level CrossFitters do you know that are great Olympic lifters? Most all of them. Now, how many great power lifters do you know that are CrossFitters that, that equals them being great competitive CrossFitters? And it's kind of like, I know a ton of guys who deadlift 550, but don't have any conditioning, but I don't know, really know a bunch of CrossFitters that snatch 270 that aren't on top of their game as far as conditioning. And I think that a lot of the mechanics and the necessary, um, types of fibers you deal with in muscle and in Olympic lifting translate to that explosive capacity of CrossFit. And I think that it's so different neuro neuromuscularly, right. As far as the, 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 the demand it puts on you, um, lifting wise, as far as using your brain to, to yeah. lift. I think it's just good movement too. Yeah. Like if, uh, you, that's a good if you have a good snatch and a good clean and jerk, you move efficiently, then you're probably going to move pretty efficiently, even if you're doing a muscle up. I'm interested so to I, see what Doug has to say about pe- all this. The people I see that do not snatch very much weight also have a really hard time. Like they move poorly. They move poorly during the snatch. They also move poorly when they do muscle ups. They move poorly when they do everything. Yeah. But yeah. They, you, you're not going to find somebody who has a picture perfect snatch and you throw them something else and they can't do it. That doesn't happen. Like if they have a great snatch, they probably do everything else pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like the. I don't know, I'd been Olympic lifting for maybe a year and a half, and then I, I got on a set of rings, and I did a muscle-up, like, immediately, yeah, before yeah. I even knew what a muscle-up was. And it's just because of good movement. Yeah. My work capacity sucks, by the way. So what, what do you I can brag about, about one that, thing. Doug? What is your kind of take on all that? Uh, I think people that, that have good squatting leverage tend to be good CrossFitters. Just people that have really long backs and short torso, torso excuse me, um, long backs and short limbs, excuse me, tend to be good squatters and good weightlifters, and you're, you're exactly that. You are you're a prototype weightlifter. You have a super long back and pretty short limbs. Yeah. And that's really part of the, short limbs. <laughs> yeah, and that's part of the reason that deadlifting is so tough for you. Yeah. But but weightlifting you're you're so good at and you excel at. Yeah. So I think I think a lot of CrossFitters are like that. that you know, makes even sense. even if you look at guys like like Rich, he has a pretty long torso and pretty short limbs and he tends to do good at weightlifting. I Me mean, strong all the way around, but he's yeah. better at weightlifting relative to like how good he is at deadlifting. He's a better weightlifter than he is a squatter or or deadlifter, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. like guys that like you would think a guy that snatches two ninety five would have a six hundred and fifty pound dead, but that's no. not necessarily the case. Yeah, that's not the case at all. You're yeah. actually, you're actually in the same boat. Super long back, and your deadlifts not near what you squat. No, you no, would have been I, a great I, weightlifter. I, I, you you out squat. You out squat had, your deadlift. If I would have had by a lot. somebody just yeah. to teach me the importance of positions and flexibility when I was in high school, I could have made a good run at. I mean, pretty good at the lifts, I think. I think you would, you would have been a high level weightlifter. Football and, and power things set into my elbows and, and yeah. destroyed them, you know? So basically, yeah, I kind of rehabbed myself back actually at John Coffey's gym. Um, and people that don't know John, John is like a very, very um, seasoned weightlifting coach. He's been in the industry. By season, for you mean insane? Old, old Aluminum and just, pepper, and chili and powder. Just insane and just, oh, and no. very accomplished. He's coached, I think, over 20 American champions. And I think. 10 uh maybe world champions he's taken two girls to the olympics he is um as greg everett put him the lost prophet of weightless <laughs> of weightlifting and basically john kind of explained my industry injury to john and and kind of gave him what bill star had given me after and i kind of ran bill's rehab program for two weeks and after i was able to like lift again john kind of built me back up um basically snatching and cleaning and jerking squatting <laughs> doing pulls and reverse hypers. And I got to the point where in basically August, I felt really good. And actually that's when I met you, um, traveled up to Memphis and, and was weightlifting and hitting PRs and getting better at weightlifting, but still, you know, very, very raw. And, and that's when, you know, we decided we were going to do the, uh, the USAW. Yes. And that's when I went, met McG and our, and our friendly rivalry began. Um, who I'm still better than. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, basically dude, that was, that was kind of, and I think it's weird. Cause that's when I think when CrossFit kind of took off in general is right around there when, when money started coming in, when they started doing things with USAW and, and holding these different events outside of just, yeah. Cause regular. USAW is known for money. Well, <laughs> I think, I think CrossFit brought the money to USAW, yeah, but, but, probably, but I think, I think that's kind of what, I think mm-hmm. that's when it became, um, kind of like from backyard fitness to kind of like 
starting to be on a, on a big scale. And that's, and that's honestly, I think when, um, the level of competition started to pick up, I mean, it's always been really good. I mean, the guys that have been at the games, it's no, it's no surprise that there's incumbents at the games every year. You know what I mean? But I think that, you know, if you look at it today, the level of competition compared, not juxtaposed, right? No. Com- compared to, <laughs> um, small words, to even bro. 2009, it's it, dude. It's a completely those words are like the same size. Though, it's a like completely different. It's a completely different ball game, man. You They're know, completely different completely, letters. Shut up. Yeah. So it's just <laughs> and basically, so basically, my training was periodized then, but was it like periodized for uh, regionals? No. And then basically, I guess after the break, we'll talk about. I basically changed my training. The guest is calling the break. Yeah, oh, I basically shit. changed. I changed. I <laughs> changed done. my He's training. I actually changed my training after the USAW. I had like peaked myself, and it was funny because that was the first time I had ever felt like my fitness peak. Like I peaked myself for that competition, and I actually did a good job of it. And then what I didn't realize is after you peak, you can't maintain what you peaked. So <laughs> I was kind of like I fell back into this like fuck, man. I'm like getting small tweaks, and I'm like doing shitty and so the training needed to change and i changed it actually and, you basically learned all and, these lessons the hardest possible way by yeah by destroying doing yourself by and doing, having to rebuild yeah, every time by doing so i'd basically changed my training january of that year going into the 2011 regional mm-hmm. so yeah how just real quick before we take a break how was that metcon up in colorado at elevation oh my god i know man, for me that, for me i thought i was well, gonna die well, at, I, like I three think, rounds yeah, in, i was like ah! I think your face said it all when I was like, is Mike purple? <laughs> like, I do know. I do know. It's funny because um, I did pretty well at it. Um, my big thing was out there as I was like, I really want to go to the games. You know what I mean? And I think I can go to the games. And there was all these athletes from the games. You know, like Austin Maliolo had gotten like sixth and James Hobart had been in the games twice and he had gotten like 10th and 12th or whatever. And they were all these guys in my heat, Pat Burke, Josh Everett. And so I was like, if you really – think like that's a realistic thing then you need to beat all these people in this metcon and i think the only person i lost to was josh or uh, was a uh, pat burke i think he won it and i think i got second in that metcon in that heat so i was like i was like okay like i'm not delusional right now like i can beat these guys it's just a question of i guess confidence and execution like do you have the confidence to do so and on that day do you do you execute you know what i mean and that was the workout was fucking I just remember, I remember feeling really, really good. Was it 10 minutes? I think it was 12 minutes. I felt really, really good like three, four minutes in and started to feel like normal exercise induced fatigue, kind of like, okay, your system's starting to slow down, but keep grinding, you feel good. And then right around seven minutes, I was just like, (gasps) I felt like I was breathing through a straw. It was just, it was, it was unbelievable. And I kept going, but like it kept going with this element of just like pain. Mm-hmm. But that that shouldn't have been there. Like I was like, oh god, this is fucking. You know, normally you can recover on double unders. Like I was just like, I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> oh, you know. And then remember that that guy, that cameraman was in my face. And y'all were sitting, <laughs> y'all were sitting right there, and I couldn't breathe. And he was like shooting me, getting this like epic shot, which I probably would have liked because it would have resulted in like cool footage of me exercising. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. Michael tell you, I was like, get the fuck out of the way. The camera guy was like, sorry, dude, sorry. I was laughing so hard when that happened. I came like right over to my jump rope. I was like, move. I was like, sorry, man. So, yeah. So we have arrived now at the, at the uh, break, the break point. The break. We come back and talk maybe some specifics about what lessons old Matt has learned. Yeah. During the break, uh, CTP is going to teach us how we're going to talk to Rich Froning. <laughs> in a couple of weeks because we haven't figured it it's out show yet. us how you peak yourself one or two times a week especially like after work when you get home and you're kind of bored it's just you <laughs> you sort of peak yourself you know <laughs> alright guys taking a break alright alright guys the Barbell Shrug podcast is heading to Cookville Tennessee to podcast with Rich Froning as part of that event we're going to have a live Q&A session with Rich if you want to be a part of that and you want to ask Rich a question then all you have to do is go to the Barbell Shrug Facebook page, and then you'll see uh, right here at the top, it says Rich Froning Live Q&A. Click here. You can click that. It'll take you to a new page, and you'll see uh, a video player here. Uh, if you're on our newsletter list, then next week when we get the exact time that that live event is going to be, uh, we're going to send you uh, over email, if you're on our newsletter list, we're going to send you the exact time and then that, that we will be live 
um, on this video screen right here. Uh, if you're not on that list, uh, be sure to sign up for the newsletter. That way you can get that link and you can know exactly when the live event is going to be. Um, when you click when you click the play button here, it's going to ask you to like our page. If you don't like our Barbell Shrug page, then it won't let you watch the video. So make sure you like our page sometime this week or right before you watch the video. That way you can watch the video. Uh, also, if you want to let your friends know about the event, you can click invite friends or you can share it on your Facebook wall. Uh, we would appreciate both of those things. Uh, you can see right below the video, you can just add a comment, just like adding a comment to any other Facebook conversation and then you know it'll pop up on our screen and then Rich will be able to read that question and he'll just answer the questions as they come up. So uh, the live event is going to be Tuesday, December 4th, probably sometime in the afternoon. So uh, go to Facebook, get on the Barbell Shrug Facebook page and like our page and then also make sure you sign up for our newsletter. That way you can know the exact time of the live event. Thanks guys. All right, part four of the snatch progression warm up with Justin Thacker here at the lab gym in St. Louis. So now what we're doing is lifting from the floor and we're gonna add our pausing sequences, two less pauses to an actual full speed lift from the ground. So we're putting the whole lift together now finally. So the first part's gonna be a three part pausing power snatch, a two part pausing power snatch, then a full speed power snatch. So same pauses, ready, set, pause one, two, three, snatch. Good. Number two, pause before knees only. Set, pause one, two, snatch. Good. Excellent. Third rep, full speed from the floor. Ready when you are. Excellent. Very nice. Very nice. So that's the three pieces there. Set two here. Same three pull positions, but we're going to add a power to overhead squat. Ready when you are. Ready? Set, pause one, two, three, snatch. Nice. And squat. Great. Number two, pause the floor knees only. Ready, set, pause, one, two, snatch, squat, recover, good, full speed, good, and you are. Squat, and recover, very nice. Last part, here it is, uh, full squat, snatch on all three. Ready, set, pause, one, two, three, snatch, excellent, two, floor, knees only, set, pause, one, two, snatch. Full speed snatch, final lift, here it is. Very nice, good. And we have now squat snatch, so all the layers came together and the, full, the most complex movement was the full speed squat snatch from the floor. Very nice. All right, see y'all next time. <laughs> we're back. Uh, we're so talking brain. about, we're talking about uh, Matt Baird's journey through CrossFit Hell and uh, <laughs> The last thing we talked about was uh, USAW. Bared and back again. The story of <laughs> failure, injury, and anger. <laughs> uh, That's good. You, you can have that for your memoirs, by the way. Bared yeah. and back again. Story of Matt Baird. And then fear, injury, and anger. Fear, injury, and anger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're talking about the USAW CrossFit meet and then kind of rolling into the 2011 regionals. Yeah, so I had, I had like peaked myself basically training – for me which was really just random still and then um like i said i didn't really know what to do after you peak and then my fitness started going to shit and my numbers started going down again i wasn't uh training really i'm still training hard but i wasn't getting any result <laughs> and uh thank you <laughs> <laughs> and so that july um i actually started with um james fitzgerald on his big dog blog right i think that's optimum performance training or i think it's opt experience actually mm -hmm. um and basically what he did is he was one of the first and i think the only at that point to have what has become sort of common practice now um your own blog which is basically this this sort of this sort of advanced main page this sort of advanced prescription for the want to be or the competitive athlete Right. Um, All the blogs up to that point were focused around athletes in their gym and right. it wasn't for like being a competitive CrossFitter. Right. So literally the way this went, dude, is like I, it was on a Monday and I was doing performance menu in the morning and then I was like, I'm going to do Amanda. And I had finished snatching after two hours and then had picked up 
my first snatch of Amanda after muscle ups and my back tweaked again, like right where I tore it. And I was like, what the fuck? So, <laughs> not, <laughs> so I was like, you should just not do exercise today and come back tomorrow hard. And then I sat, <laughs> I like, I thought I, I basically sat down that whole day and was like, what am I going to do about my training? Like shit's going wrong right now. And I kept like tweaking my back, just nothing major, but just kept on like giving me signs again. Like you're going to fucking hurt yourself. So I basically had a couple buddies that were following OPT. I think at that point, uh, AJ, more and Nate Schrader um and they were like and Rory Hanlon and they were like dude get on this like this is this is it like this is this is what it's all about like he's training smarter he's going to open your eyes to a different type of CrossFit training and it's not just um you know trying to kill yourself every day and see how much you can lift it's it's done he, you know he's got the, he's got the science and he's got the background he knows more than you do about you so just fucking trust him um and basically that Tuesday I started with him and trained my ass off, man, and saw more gains in uh, in two, three months of training on his generalized format than I had ever seen on my own, including when I first started CrossFit. So there was something to this, and I actually used that to train um, through the open. I think I got like eighth in the southeast, and then I actually tr- used that to train seventh. Seventh, yeah. No, no, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, something like that. You anyway. play something. Something, something in the top yeah, 10. I thought you and McGoldrick tied it or something like that. Yeah, That's what and it then was. basically and then basically went down regions. went down to regionals. Um and I've always said I wanted to go to the games, but it was weird. It's kind of like that it's cross it's a weird sport and that either you have blind optimism and you're really successful and you have this confidence to execute or it's sort of a prove it to me that you can do it sport i.e like yeah being go to the games is really awesome and then you go to the games now you have the confidence to go to the games right so it wasn't until probably a month before that that um i had developed like yeah dude i think you can do this like you did well in the open i'm, I'm getting fitter i was actually training up at faction at that point because my college town had been brutalized by a tornado so I had moved up to Memphis to train, and I was training with with all you guys, and and kind of getting better day by day. And then went down to 2011 regionals, and the only thing that I was still bad at, I felt, was basically um, running and deadlifting, right? And so I had positioned myself. Long story short, I was in third um, at the 2011 regional, and then that deadlift box jump workout came up, and oh. I basically felt like going out to that, like I was in perfect position. All the rest of the workouts. Played to some strengths of mine. I knew I was going to do well, and it was literally just I felt, like, defeated. Like, I was like, dude, you are going to fuck this up. You know what I mean? And I felt like a soldier that was about to just be slaughtered going into battle. You were falling on your own uh, Uh, sword. Yeah, man. And I literally went out there and did just that. Sort of like, you know, maybe if I had better confidence at that point, um, I would have done better. But I got, you know, I I, I think my finishes for that weekend was, like, fifth, seventh, 33rd on that work on that workout then fourth fourth and sixth so i had like one finish outside of the top eight but the way crossfit had gotten to that point it was so competitive the field was so competitive similar to what happened to mike mcgoldrick that year you know he has one finish outside the top 10 like myself and that puts you in seventh or sixth place or whatever i right. finished you know what i mean and yeah mike and mike and i tied but i actually beat him in the world which was awesome <laughs> to see i beat him <laughs> I was ahead of him by one I spot. I beat you in the world. I was ahead of him by one spot on this stupid little Google Doc. It was, like a, it was Doc. a weird point. It was a Google Doc. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was beat him by one spot in the open and then one spot in the... So, yes, I'm still better than him. Um, <laughs> and then and basically, oh, used, OPT, wow. used OPT throughout the summer. Um, squatted a little bit with Chris Moore, which is awesome because, if anything, I learned that I do not know how to use my back and hamstrings correctly. And that was like... Something I needed to fucking figure out. Oh, like that, that. you flop it onto the box. With yeah, like I just didn't. I just, my, I didn't. I talk about like intelligent fiber. Like I just didn't. My hamstrings were not. I just did not know how to make that mind body connection and use my fucking hamstrings. Um, and that that had hindered my deadlift, along with my levers and my and my squat. Um, and I think that I think that at that level, the the better you squat, the more complete you are. Not necessarily the better athlete you are, but the more complete your strength is. All right. Mm -hmm. So like, I think when I started squatting with you guys, I was squatting like three thirty, and then I squatted four Oh five to that box. Right. And then what I realized is that, um, 
I got stronger, but as soon as I started conditioning, that was like strength in a vacuum. Like if you just train powerlifting, as soon as you go into multiple modality fitness, it sort of all goes away. Mm -hmm. And I had made like a 20 pound gain. So basically then I was at 350. Yeah, it's like a, it's a short, the frequent squatting is like a short term neurological hack. Yeah. Like is a, you get extremely confident and that, that skill, how to move the weight and pretty yeah. sharply. Yeah. That's why squatting frequently is a good way to get stronger. Cause yeah. you're, you're practicing a lot. Exactly. You, you don't get intimidated by weights and you have the confidence to keep your form and all that good stuff. Yeah, story changes a bit when you start adding in other stuff. Yeah, running and, and, and like I said, like you made a point training. earlier about how <clears throat> so many misses takes away from your recovery. Yeah. If you're just doing power thing or weightlifting alone, the approach to do heavy, frequent training is probably your your, your oh, best yeah. way because you just practice all the time. Like, oh yeah, miss snatch, keep going till you make it. Figure out what you're doing wrong. If you also have to do like uh, max burpees effort and and burpees and max effort like ring uh, muscle ups or something afterwards. You gotta take it easy on your shoulders a little yeah. bit because there's only so much, only so many pebbles you can pick up at once, right, Matt Barrett? Exactly, exactly right. Wink. And and so and so the big thing then is I trained with James that whole year, and I was like, I'm going to the games. Like you were right there, um, you know, like you can do this. Had the sort of the confidence. I've struggled a little bit like mentally as far as like when things go wrong, like kind of doubting my fitness, which I've kind of got shirt up now. Um, training with sort of an individualized approach with CJ Martin. Um, but I trained basically all throughout the year, ended up doing basically the exact same in the open, got like eighth or seventh or basically top 10 again. And then basically did the exact same thing. Do you think that's because other people were kind of doing the same thing you were doing? I do. Like, like everybody took it to the next level I do. that year. I do, man. So did I get better? I, I No, I didn't. And that's actually why I ended up. Well, you didn't get better compared to other people, but you, your own fitness had improved. Right. But, did, but, but, but you have to look at it in my opinion, quantifying your fitness, like, yes, you can, yes, for your own sanity, you have to look at it individually. Like, yes, you got better this year. You snatched versus last year. You snatched or this year, this system is stronger or, but the idea is that this is a, this is a sport of comparison. And, and if, and if I beat you last year and you beat me this year, like what, like there's something wrong, you know what I mean? Um, and so basically I ended up, Starting off 2012 regional, I got third or second in Diane. I was in second and ended up actually like retweaking my back. I was like oh. deadlifting sideways, but, the, but, but I was going so fast that the judge was like, turn your bar towards the crowd or I'm going to no rep you. So I kind of did a like was sideways and turned it back over mm. and didn't feel it until that, that wad, mm. uh, that clean pistol row wad and was sitting there on that 2k basically rowing at 85% like my back feels like shit <laughs> <laughs> and, then went, and then basically went and picked up that 225 and was like and you can't pick that up anymore um and ended up withdrawing from the competition I think in eighth I kind of battled all weekend with injury and just battled my own arrogance and ego and finally at the end was like dude you're not going to be able to even pick up 345 let alone do it 21 times call it it was fucking heartbreaking. Learned a lot from it though, man. And what I learned out of all that is that that journey that I kind of just explained over the last eight hours is basically brought me to the fact that if you expect to be the best in the world at something, you have to take the necessary steps to be the best in the world at something. And if you're trying to go to the CrossFit games, you are essentially saying that you want to be the best in the world at something. Now, obviously Rich is the fittest man out of the best of the best. But if you go to the CrossFit games, just like any CEO is the best at his job, right? Or, you know, a professional baseball is the best baseball player is the best at his sport. Like that is what you are saying. It's what you're proclaiming. Um, and so why was I trusting my fitness, um, to an online format that was, that was for everyone? Because if it's for everyone, it's really for no one. Right, like you're, you're Whoa. like you're, like, you're <laughs> like because because how do you because how do you how do you differentiate like dude my levers Doug just said are different than 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 your levers so if dude what if James is programming for a guy with different levers than me or or James talks about essence of athlete you know my essence like I can get better at is that a real thing they say that he talked what does that talk, mean he kind of coined it and basically what his the short in his theory is it's basically like um. Like Fucking you can Deepak develop, Chopra stuff you can there. develop, you can develop capacity in different ways based off the type of athlete you are. So like, if you're more of a long range athlete training, you short range, high power, a lactic power stuff is going to wear you down. 
Whereas training within your essence is going to make you better. Whereas I'm more explosive kind of short burst training me long range aerobic, which is basically what James's theory is on CrossFit is how you get better. You train long range aerobic stuff and then Mm -hmm. ships kind of fall where they may. Well, if I'm the exact opposite, then training long range aerobic stuff does not help me. It actually wears me down. And that's actually what I experienced last year was for the first time I experienced that I needed an individualized format. I needed a, a program that was specifically designed for me. And it took me failing again on basically the stage to go to the games to realize <laughs> that. And what it was, was the fact that dude, more often last year I had to take extra days off cause I just felt worn. Cause I felt like, Oh my fucking God. Like I just cannot move. Like I can't, I felt overtrained. I felt overwhelmed. I felt like, uh, there was a point dude where I didn't sleep for like two weeks cause my body and my CNS was just so just, just gnarled, man. I was suffering of what I thought was adrenal fatigue and like I would start to go fast and my, and my body would just feel like it had no fluid in it, no energy. And I wasn't lifting heavy and it, everything was a chore and it became like really, it really mentally fucked me. Cause I was like, dude, what is going on? Like you were, you were, you were sad. I was man. And, 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 You're sad. and, and, and things it, aren't going your way. You get a little sad. And okay. what it did is it, well, talk I'm, about I'm, it. I'm happy it happened because <laughs> what it did and for all the listeners, what it is, man, is I, I, and this is opinion based is if you are following, uh, uh, a generalized blog template and, and regardless of the name, OBT outlaw, uh, hyperfit, um, there's going to come a point where you maximize your potential on that given, uh, page, that given program. And it will not be until you sit down and pay someone or you, you know, reach around to, to, basically let them program for you that you realize that <laughs> give a that, guy reach around and get that, a program yeah, well, for you. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. You got to do something else. You know what I mean? That like your, the, the merits of the individualized program are, are what are, what is needed, you know, and people have given me, well, rich doesn't do have a coach. Yeah. Well, dude, he, he rich, rich is an himself, anomaly. Though. Rich is an anomaly. Yeah. And to compare yourself to rich, is like you being a basketball player and trying to be like, well, Magic Johnson didn't shoot a thousand free throws every day after practice. That's setting yourself up for failure. Trying to, and so what you need to do is you need to realize to try to maximize your own potential and not base it off other people's. A, a good example of that is. <laughs> people is, go, uh, uh, Rich Funny, he eats McDonald's and stuff, so why can't I? Yeah. Well, dude, I got it, a feeling too that Rich probably puts more thought into his programming than yeah. he lets on. And you got to realize too. Um, I, I it couldn't think, be such a, a, a key part of your life and you not put a lot of dedication towards it. That's what all he does. I mean, what else is he thinking about during large chunks of the day? If not, how can he get better and develop this thing that he's already mastering? I mean, of course it's a big well, part of Well, the idea this. too is that Rich trains by feel. And in order to train by feel, you have to be very intuitive with how you feel. So that in itself, you are training thinking about it. How connected are you with your emotions and feelings? Um. I'll tell you, like this. how do you, how do you, you answer this question, right? How do you feel, man? I feel great, man. How, but do, I, how else do you feel? <laughs> this is Barbara how, Walters. Right? How else do you feel? It's funny. It's funny. Make like, him fit, cry. Fitness, <laughs> fitness, fitness is so important to me um, that it used to determine like my, my, my overall demeanor. Like if I was going really well in training, I'd be, yeah. I'd be, I'd be really awesome boyfriend and I'd be a really good friend. But if shit's going wrong, I'm a piece of fucking shit. Which you know curiously, curiously mean? enough makes you an asshole. Yeah. So, so yeah. And, and I expect that too. Like I'd have like a, I had like a, it's so silly to look back on like, I had a bad squatting session. So I'm gonna come home and be a dick to all my friends and family because, Oh, my trainer didn't go well, bro. Yeah. I used to do that. Yeah. yeah. He did. Or I, 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 rem- out of, I remember. Or I bombed out of the meet and be a dick for a week at work. You understand, man. I bombed out of this powerlifting competition. That's what I trained for for 12 weeks, man. Yeah. And like now your, I'm like, it fucking matters like, zero. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> well, now yeah, it matters zero. It's not important, yeah. really. And a lot long, of it. You got to have it, a life, too. A lot of it, you know, I'm very happy right now, but is that because, you know, I, I've now got a, an individualized coach and CJ Martin's uh, basically helped me erase all the weaknesses that have sort of kept me from doing exactly what I want to do. Maybe, but we'll see. I think, this, yeah, this yeah. spring, but I, also, I also think though, that part of, part of the, the merit of having an individualized coach and something that's that you guys offer with being so knowledgeable and so experienced is the fact that you can be there for an athlete. Um, and having, having sort of a, a, a faceless or, or, or a big face, 
blog, how accessible is your coach? How can you, how can you tell your coach, yo man, during, during the fifth minute of that set, I felt my arm forearms blow up and I'm, and was that lactic, was that lactic threshold or was this, that, or today I felt like my breathing was off. All those things changed my program and all those things have determining factors on, Hey man, my, my posterior chain is smoked today. You know, that determines what goes Maybe on. Maybe I don't want to do your max good mornings to failure wide that yeah. you randomly picked out of your yeah. ass and put yeah, on the website. And, 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 and I think, <laughs> and I think that what it also does is, as a good coach has these intangibles. And I know that Doug and Mike are really good at that. And so are you, Chris. And it's the fact that the, the mental side of CrossFit is almost as important, if not more important than the physical side, because at the end of the day, man, um, you need to be mentally locked tight. You need to be so, you need to be like a fucking ship. It's just like made of steel, dude. Like mentally, you need to have the confidence that if you really believe that you're one of the best in the world, you need to prove it. And there needs, it needs to be unrelenting. And when shit happens and shit falters in competition, it cannot falter your approach or your perception of your fitness or, um, or your confidence, man. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you're in that last heat at regionals, everyone is pretty much the same fit fitness level like like everyone can do 50 fucking unbroken this and snatch this and clean that and run this or row that at the end of the day it's confidence and execution like at the end of the day dude that's all it boils down to and and like and there's some out there's some there's some outliers with that like i was talking to cj about the fact that like you know he really believes that josh bridges and 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 rich you know they are genetically gifted you know they produce atp faster and and they're their ability to utilize the oxygen, high concentration of you know, in the that, bloodstream. They, that they breathe, Star that they Wars breathe fans? in, you know, their, their, <laughs> their body's ability to, to utilize the oxygen that they breathe in may be different, you know, on like a, on like a measurable level. But honestly, man, they're besides, basically X-Men. Yeah. Basically besides that, <laughs> besides them being like fucking mutants, but you make a good point. I, I, it's I, just called I get the more I think it's way more, uh, how and why you do something, not necessarily what you do. Yeah, man, and and it's you got you got to approach things very specifically, and you got to have a clear rationale with within your own brain as to why you're doing something, why it's the right thing you should yeah, be doing. Yeah, man, and that's and if that's, you have any doubts, it doesn't matter how well the thing is put together, you're not going to do well. And that exactly, and that's why when evaluating my sort of journey this year and where I was going to go with my programming, I chose an individualized coach versus continuing to follow a blog format, which I've been successful on, man. And that's, you know, arrogance aside, I've gotten really good at CrossFit, you know? And, um, but it's, it's kind of all things being equal. I'm really awesome. Okay. It's okay to say that I was really kick ass and awesome. But, but, (laughs) but the next step was the fact that I needed to work on my mind and that was more along the lines of, yeah, individualized program I know is going to give me better results. Of course it is. It's fucking for me. Yeah, but, I, we trained you know yesterday I mean? and I actually noticed that you're a lot less of a basket case well, than we used to train I together. That, <laughs> just, we trained he's, been, a lot. he's been reading my Angelou poems a lot. It's really helping. <laughs> we trained a lot a couple years ago and, and, yeah. like, and, Matt, and, and that's a basket case. A lot of, yeah, man. And, that, just, and then yesterday <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't lose it one time. It was crazy. It's, it's <laughs> and you also trained really well. And so I appreciate that, kind of man. And a lot there. of that, and honestly, a lot of that is due to having an individualized, accessible coach. Like, if you're one of your athletes comes to you and is like, Mike, I'm struggling or Doug, I'm struggling, dude. Can you help me out? You're not going to be like, yo, dude, suck a cock. <laughs> like, you know, you're not, you're, you're, you're going to be accessible. You're going to be accessible because number one, they're We're paying you. We're going to have the disclaimer on this one. <laughs> number one, they're paying you. And number two, this is, you're doing what you love. This is what you like to do. You like to train athletes. Your success is, their success is your success. So yeah. you have a vested interest in their success. I just so, want to say something. Sometimes our athletes may feel like we're saying that, but I'm telling them what they need to hear. Yeah, <laughs> so, <laughs> Not just telling them to go piss off. Yeah. 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 Some, some, sometimes I'm like, no, you do need to try harder because sometimes that is the right answer. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes it's not. But anyways. So I mean, <laughs> but for you, wanna, but for you it would never there. be the right advice. Oh, just keep <laughs> trying harder because you're already yeah. really trying too hard often. Yeah. And I, I do. I think... I think the biggest thing that I've said through this ridiculous expl- explanation of my CrossFit experience <laughs> is that, like, is that, you know, I probably should have found a, whether it was a local coach or a, or a coach sooner and, and really evaluated my weaknesses. And that sounds really easy. Like, I know a lot of competitors that train themselves and they, they train their weaknesses, but have, 
even the best athletes should have coaches. And, and here's my thing is, is this, the scary thing is would rich be even better if he had a, a qualified coach, you know, how scary is that? You know what I mean? What if when like, you see red, what you see is what I call blue. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> You, know, you, ever like, thought about, you ever thought about that? Like, like uh, I remember when I, Mike Mike McGoldrick and I went out to meet OPT, and he was talking about uh, Miko Salo and how like if you really push yourself to the absolute red line, which is what you should be doing in competition, right? Then you fucking lay down and you lay on the floor because right? it hurts. Because I don't care how fit you are, right? And that's something like I was always like, you'll ask Mike, I'll be like, I never lay down. <laughs> freaking never you know what i mean but like i also never push myself yeah but but dude like if you really redline if you really push your body beyond your mind at the end of it you're gonna you're gonna lay down and hurt and he was like that whole james was like that whole sisu bullshit he's like the scary thing is what's that uh, miko salos he's it's his his tagline sisu i don't know what, what does it that means. mean i don't know does it's, it mean like some kind of <laughs> Some, it has some kind of Norwegian him. word for like push beyond limits. Yeah, or something. something I don't know, who knows something like that, like whale vagina or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he said like he doesn't lay down because that's what like dogs Animal, do. Animals, animals do, do that. Animals yeah. do when they surrender. And mm-hmm. like James was like, dude, that means that that guy doesn't really know his full capacity. And what I'd like to do is get my hands on him, right, and see no homo on that, <laughs> and see like what his real capacity is that forces him to lay down. Because if you know that. Well, then you can tap into that, dude. You can dance on that red line. You know what I mean? So, like, dude, that all the all this experience has brought me to the fact that, like, dude, individualized training is is the <clears throat> is really the end all be all for me, and it probably is for anyone who really thinks they they have a legitimate shot at becoming very great. I'm sure, at what like Doug, do. you would say it's probably true for people who want an efficient path towards fitness too, even if they're not as hardcore as Matt Baird. But they want to get off the train in red line to the point where no, you no, have no, to no. lay I'm down. No, 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 no. It's it's good to have uh, a program that's sort of tailored a bit to what you want to get done. Oh no, I totally agree with that. Like if I come in and I'm just a regular oh. dude and I want to improve my shoulder mobility or something because I have a former injury when I used to play baseball ten years ago, I've got some specific things I got to do before I want to get fit. Yeah. It's not always just for the extreme guy. That's the idea of individual program. It can help yeah. the average person. That's a great point. Yeah, I mean, if, you, if you have a torn QL and and you don't know what to do, then that's just doing a all main this page, time you have yeah. to spend like searching blog to blog to blog, finding the perfect workout. And, when someone and then trying that knows you and, then and knows that about you can just go in there and write a workout that's tailored for your specific situation. And help you avoid three and or four you, rounds of injury. Help you strengthen that damn thing. That's the biggest sure. thing, dude. It's like I got with CJ and he's like, dude, your fucking back is weak. Like we need to, that is a problem. And it's not a problem. Cause like, Oh bro, you lose the deadlift wad. It's like, dude, that is a problem for life. Like, <laughs> like, like you're going to die fucking back is weak, dude. Like we, and so a lot of my training, we overemphasize posterior chain work to the point where, how'd you approach that? Did you, did you, what did you add in to, to address the back? Um, most well, recently with his guy, I would say, dude, right. You know, we periodize everything. Like right now we were training for the American open, um, and the outlaw open, um, out in Palm Springs, but a lot of squatting and then a lot of accessory work, dude, which yeah. I think a lot of CrossFitters don't do. And that might be a topic for another day, but dude, I think accessory work for the CrossFitter is something that a lot of CrossFitters are like, Oh, like, like RDLs or like, they start um, viewing those things as, mornings, as not functional. Or like reverse hyper or like glute ham raises weighted. Sometimes like, I program some of that stuff and I see people leave the gym dude, before they do, they do that. Me, I'm like, the, oh, the reason, the reason that you hit that fucking squat PR was not because you, uh, cause you squatted Monday is cause you squatted and you did that reverse hyper because you, you cleaned and you did those RDLs. It, it's less important when you don't have weaknesses, but if you're, like for me, when I came off my back injury, probably in a similar vibe as you, it's like that's what allowed me to then train again was was taking away the weak links. But right, right. Once you can do those all those things to a good level, like if you can do if you rattle off thirty glute ham raises with body weight with perfect form, your hamstrings are now good to go. Yeah, more of that won't really help. I mean, but if you can only do like two glute hams before your hamstrings pop off the back of your 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 butt, yeah, you need to do more of it's this. It's Identifying the weakness, <laughs> and the, you know, because this is the weakness for you. The way I saw that man was actually if you look at it. On a global scale, the Chinese, um, their weightlifting system, they they identify that as weakness correction system. So they're not Bulgarian and they're not Russian influence. The the, the Chinese 
label themselves as a weakness correction program. So yes, they are Bulgarian in essence, as far as intensity and volume, but they also are Russian in exercise selection per individual. So like that's the individualized program. That's you why said I, intensity. So like that's that's them. That and is it you know obviously I'm putting put some some, some, dr- some drugs help too. But like but like dude, the, the Chinese are a perfect example of that. They all their programs are individualized. They're no, not, they'll do any, they'll do knee extensions. They think it's gonna they're, help. Yeah, them. they're not following a Bulgarian. We're Bulgarian. We're Russian. They are okay. They're Chinese. Okay, Lou. Okay, Lou. <laughs> they take a little Bulgarian. Yeah. They take a little Russian. Add a little sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. Mix it up in a, a bowl. Little sriracha. A little sriracha. Eat yeah. It down. Yeah, man. And like they, you know, that they, they are all about weakness correction. If if you if you are fast but you lack pull strength, you're gonna fucking be doing pulls. If you are you have pull strength but you lack squatting strength, you're gonna be fucking squatting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it sounds simple, but like, why aren't more people fucking doing that? It you, takes uh, critical thinking skills. You can explain you can explain to people how to do something, and that takes like five fifteen minutes. Then it takes the next five ten years to the next to know the why behind yeah, all that. Yeah. It just takes time. And, you know, something, something to keep in mind for, for competitive athletes is that, you know, I've always been mildly obsessed with the why, but sometimes the why can hinder you. Sometimes you just need to go be an athlete and turn your brain off and see what your body's capable of. You know, and that's something that I tell my clients is don't let your mind be your limiter. Let your fitness be your limiter. You could almost, you have a PowerPoint slide deck in your head, don't you? You're going <laughs> to, does anybody know what this is? This is a question mark. Okay. <laughs> And sometimes questions are good, but when are they bad? Like, so you pausing dramatically, pacing back and forth in front of your clients with a with a like a on my face, yeah, like a, like a <laughs> shitty eating grin. Like, does anybody know why? Pause <laughs> awkwardly. I'll tell you why. Find your own limiting factors yeah, in your life. That's how I make money. Your goals. Your <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, yeah. that's how we do it. All right, guys, we're gonna we're gonna have to shut it down here. Uh, some of us have to go train. Should make a closing point? Each one make a closing point? Yeah, let's, uh, we'll do that. We're going to let Doug uh, speak for the third time today. <laughs> and uh, I always get excited to hear Doug talk, and then when I'm around, he never fucking says anything. <laughs> I just want to fucking learn something, man. Just fucking say something. It's hard, hard to get a word in with three of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead and uh, promote your, your shizzle. Shizzle. Actually, I think the the best product to promote promote for this episode is probably Simple Strength. It's probably the most most relevant that? product. Yeah. Have you watched that, that was, yet? No. Oh no. He didn't even know about it. I guess. Is, <laughs> yeah. Looked on his it? face. He was like, I've never even heard of that. What is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's Chris's strength seminar. Go Doug, tell him Doug about will it. Tell you. Uh, yeah, I did a strength seminar in in April. Was it? I it was, was like, back in the spring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like twenty five pounds, a little heavier than I am now, but. Uh, I, I took the time to gather in. It looks good, people. A lot of uh, <laughs> I took all the the last year. So my my thoughts on training really sort of broke away from the typical. I started delving into other questions, and then really sort of asked myself more of the whys and you know how could I break things down to a simple approach to where I could communicate very complex ideas about why you would choose to do something like yeah. a complicated periodization approach, yeah. but put it into terms where. If I told it to my mom, she would know exactly why I would choose to do that. And like package it. Yeah, I, I packaged it in very novel ways. So the, the strength seminar, the simple strength, is like sort of a, a novel approach towards laying out a rationale to training from beginning to, you know, experience in advance to where you could grasp very complicated ideas about why you would add in variation, choose different exercises. Max out frequently, like purpose, but purpose. give somebody a tool where they can understand and go coach themselves with yeah. that knowledge. Yeah. Removing it from a, a black box, a, a mysterious thing that only these fancy coaches know and empowering like Prometheus, giving fire to the, to the common man, like get, taking these ideas and, and, and giving it to you, <laughs> taking an idea like periodization and making it completely obvious and intuitive yeah. to an example, like picking the lowest hanging fruit f- first. Why would you not want to pick the fanciest thing first? Yeah. People want to do that. Yeah. But if you can say, well, if you can lay out a rationale as to why you would pick the easiest path first, that allows you to achieve more later and using this analogy like of picking the lowest base, hang- building yeah, a house. Yeah. That makes sense to people versus laying out a rationale on a PowerPoint about, macro and, and micro models of periodization yeah. and randomization and variance. No one knows, no one knows or cares what you're talking about, but if you can make it relate to them, then they, they feel empowered that's by perfect, it. So that's man. the purpose of that program. Where can I get that? 
That was my plug. That, that was <laughs> you can, fit, you. fitter.tv. Yeah. Oh, we could, I don't know. We, I can, can, go, to, you you can go to that fitter.tv. I've got to leave town. My fiance is like very angry at me right now. <laughs> so, yeah. yes. I'm to say, you said you were really happy right now. That life was really awesome. Yeah. You talked about trans. I was going to say, Cause I is, it, married quite is your yet. fiance also <laughs> helping you be happy? You should probably say that because she's going to listen to this shit. She's sometimes. <laughs> 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 I love you. <laughs> Don't you have any other plugs besides the very awesome one that of my stuff? <laughs> uh, no, the only other thing we need to talk about is how to sign up to make sure you're on the list to see the live event with Rich next week. At a minimum, if you're not on the newsletter list, then you need to be on there because we'll we'll send out the link to the live event yeah, in the email. Love that guy, Richard Froning. If you love if you do guy. the if you sign up on the newsletter so list, we will you'll definitely so get fit, bro. so tan. You'll get an email yeah. to find out at least how to, how to get on that list. We're not even gonna pretend that Rich is not super <laughs> handsome. Yeah, he's super handsome. He's a sharp guy. He's a sharp looking guy. That's yeah. the, the way when when the guy's really good looking and you don't want to sound gay, you just say sharp. Yeah. Is that yeah. why it's, sharp? Yeah. it's like it's like dude bro, looking fit and sharp, bro. Just looking like, so just like, sharp. Just like, oh, Chris, he is a sharp looking guy. Oh, it's yeah. just like, that way it doesn't sound like you want to like touch him. <laughs> but you do. No, you don't. All right. <laughs> Matt, what uh anything you want to promote? I, I know you got a couple things. Uh well. If you're in Atlanta, where should you train? Yeah, obviously we uh, the spot CrossFit North Atlanta. We're Atlanta's second oldest CrossFit, and uh, Jan One we'll be opening up our new seventeen thousand square foot facility, complete Boom. with separate, separate six thousand square foot space devoted to strength and conditioning and competitive athletes. Jeez. Okay, so we'll have seven thousand square feet for main class area, and then another six thousand square feet for just competitors. And then office space, so you can come see me in my new office. Wow. Director of operations. Boom, operating that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Wow. Uh, but yeah, man, we opened up Jan 1. Sounds like the premier spot come, in Atlanta. On, yeah, man, it it's going to be awesome. We're uh, we're really excited. We're going to try to get some um, some pretty key sponsors going and uh, and really take this thing to the next level. I think the, the, the idea, you know, for all the CrossFit owners out there, um, and I'll be charging royalties for this if you haven't figured this out already is, um, diversify your product, man. Cause at the, at the end of the day, CrossFit's going to still be around, but it's not going to continue to grow 30% a year. So what are you going to do? And the answer is strength and conditioning. What Excellent. You, uh, what are you going to do? And, uh, you, you do, uh, some programming for folks. Do, you want to promote that at all? If you need help. Yeah. If you need help, whether you're an aspiring athlete or already competitive athlete, whether you're sports specific, go ahead and, um, Email me at matt at crossfitnorthatlanta.com and obviously we can talk about goals and strengths and weaknesses and and more importantly just your uh, your approach and what you're looking to do. Do they need do they oh, can't talk? Do they need to live in Atlanta to send you an email? No, no, I've got actually got a uh, <laughs> I've actually got an ultra endurance client right now in India. So cool, India. India. Wow. Very cool. So yeah, you guys need help. Pay in rupees? Well, not yet. <laughs> okay, I think he I think he's referring to the reach round. Yeah, earlier. That's, okay. that's what we've worked out. So. All right. Well, <laughs> From thanks, India. Thanks for having me, guys. I thanks for coming it. on, Matt. Appreciate awesome. it. Great show. We'll have to do it again. Shin awesome. Kui. Later, guys. Shin Kui. It was great. That was fun. That was fun stuff right there. That was a good podcast. Shin you go back to, you gotta go back to the podcast.